How are we doing everybody and welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. My name is Jason C and if you're a subscriber, thanks so much for the support and for watching. Uh, if you're new to the channel looking for the latest in whiskey and bourbon news and reviews, you have found the right place. So hit that subscribe button below and hit that bell notification so you know when I'm releasing a new video or if you want to join me for one of my live streams. Baker's Bourbon is one of the four bourbons that comprise Jim Beam's Small Batch Bourbon Collection along with Basil Hayden, Knob Creek and Booker's Bourbon. Baker's has the third highest proof coming in at 107. Now with the fan favorite Knob Creek small batch and the looming presence of Booker small batch, uh, Baker's is usually the less talked about bourbon in the small batch collection and it's today's Mash and Drum review. So Baker Beam made his name as master distiller at the Jim Beam Distillery in Claremont, Kentucky. Not only was he the grand nephew of Jim Beam himself, but he was also the cousin of Booker No. As most bourbon lovers know, Mr. No is widely recognized as the creator of small batch bourbons. Now because of that, the 1980s saw the birth of single barrels and small batch collections. Consumers began wanting bourbons a little bit more upmarket, something similar to Scottish single malts. The distilleries were more than happy to oblige. Not only could they charge more for these exclusive bottlings, but it would hopefully make their entire portfolio, including the basic bourbons, more popular. Now when someone asks you what's the difference between regular bourbon and small batch bourbons, thankfully the answer is really easy. There is no complete definition of what small batch bourbon is. It can range from the combining of 5 barrels up to 200 barrels and even more to get a consistent flavor profile that the master distiller is looking for as opposed to a single barrel offering where flavors can change from bottle to bottle. So the write-up from Jim Beam claims that this is made using a special strain of jug yeast that was originally kept in a jug generations ago. This is a 107 proof small batch version of the line aged 7 years. Now comparatively Knob Creek is 9 years old but bottled at only 100 proof and Booker's which is around 6 to 7 years old but bottled at barrel proof. So it's slightly younger than Knob Creek but also slightly higher proof and more expensive around 55 bucks. But I have seen this at some stores for as little as $30 and the good thing is that this is widely available everywhere. All right, so here's a nice close-up of the bottle which looks a bit more like a wine bottle with that black label and that big seven year age statement on there that you gotta love. I mean, it's nice to know exactly what you're getting in this bottle. Now, besides me thinking that Baker's gets no love for most bourbon drinkers out there, Baker's has been in the news a bit and we'll get into that, but let's get to a pour first. Uh, like I said, that big seven year. On the back, uh, it'll actually give you the batch number. So this is batch B-90-001. So if you have this, uh, definitely try along with me if you're watching this. Let's see. Let's get a nice pour here. Oh yeah, that's a good pour. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, so as I just mentioned, uh, Baker's Bourbon from Jim Beam has been in the, been in the bourbon newswire a little bit. Uh, it's actually going to be coming a single barrel bourbon as opposed to a small batch like it is now. Uh, I mentioned that small batches use different, you know, different barrels to batch them together uh, to get a more consistent flavor profile. Whereas a single barrel bourbon, you know, basically what's in that barrel is all you're going to get is a product of one single barrel. So the flavors could differ a little bit from bottle to bottle, but I think you get a little bit something more exclusive. And I think they're trying to differentiate bakers a little bit more. And I could see why. Uh, the label change and everything I think is supposed to come uh, later this year. Uh, but I definitely wanted to revisit this and see actually how it tastes before moving to a single barrel since I do really feel like Baker's is overlooked and I haven't had in a while. So let's get into it. So here's the color, guys. It has a really nice color to it. It's got a nice honey, deep, rich color to it. A little bit of a, little bit of a copper uh, color there to it as well. Really nice. It sticks to the glass pretty well. It's got good legs. It's really sticking actually really well. Surprising for not being barrel proof. It really sticks nicely. A little bit of drip, but not too much. Let's go into the nose and see what we get first. Here we go. Wow, this is, this is really sweet so far on the nose. This is like pure... Um, I went to a baseball game uh, not too long ago and got a... I always like getting a box of Cracker Jacks. This smells like a box of Cracker Jacks. It's caramel. It's some really nice sweet corn to it. It's got a lot of vanilla going on in here. The proof isn't really, I mean, it's 107 proof, but it's really not coming through as 107. Coming through a lot lighter for me. 
Man, you get a little deeper, and one of the most striking notes that I'm getting on here is a lot of citrus. There's a ton of orange flavor coming through here. A lot of um, kind of that juicy fruit, um, orange citrus, almost like a uh, like an orange rind almost. Really nice. All right, you get a little deeper. Some of the, the, the cinnamon, some baking spices start, start kind of creeping up on you too there. I mean, it's so sweet up front and so inviting with that citrus spice. It's really good. It, it, it takes a little bit of time to get to get down deep and get that kind of that typical Jim Beam bourbon type of peanut funk to it. Yeah, it's more sweet and, and caramel and vanilla forward and that citrus note. Man, it's it's one of the more uh, unique uh, noses you get from a Jim Beam. Usually that peanut characteristic kind of really jumps out. But this is really nice and inviting on the nose. All right, let's go to the palate. Let's see what we get. Here we go. Cheers. Wow, that's a ton of vanilla. A lot of vanilla. Really good on the first sip. The vanilla and caramel just kind of, it's like a tidal wave. Nice proof. Could definitely feel it going down, giving you a little bit of Kentucky hug there. Really feels nice. A little bit of a pepperiness there on the back end. Pretty good mouth coating here too. Has a nice mouth feel. Let's go for another sip and see what we get. Cheers. Okay, now... Okay, now the Jim Beam nuttiness characteristic is starting to come through, especially on the back end. But up front, I'm still getting that really nice Cracker Jack note. You're getting that caramel, vanilla, that sweet corn mash. Mm. Baking spices start coming into play. But that orange, that citrus note is really, it takes a little second to get there, but all of a sudden you start feeling on the sides of your tongue. You feel this peppery, like citrus uh, spice to it. It's really unique. All right, let's go for another sip. Here we go. So now, now the oak characteristics are starting to come in. You're getting a little bit more of an oak characteristic, some sweet oak. It's not bitter at all. Um, definitely comes in a little bit towards the finish. But man, this, so this to me does not sip like a 107 proof uh, bourbon. This one is coming in a little bit lighter to me. Man, the citrus, uh, the, the citrus note of it, the sweetness up front. It's kind of a dangerous bourbon. You could probably sip this one pretty quick. Let's go for another sip here. Cheers. Wow, the finish on this is really warming, but it's not overly done. I would say the, the finish on this is more um, kind of on the short side of medium. I wouldn't say it's uh, medium to long. I'd say it's a little bit more just over short into medium. doesn't last too long, but it definitely leaves an impression on the back of the palate. The pepperiness and the citrus notes, are those, those spiky characteristics that you kind of get with, um, you know, with the bourbon with some rye in it, they're definitely there. But I'm more impressed with the with the front of the palate. As soon as it as soon as it kind of takes over when you first take that sip, you feel the sweetness on the tip of your tongue. Uh, then the caramel, the vanilla, kind of just works its way back. And then all of a sudden, on the sides of your tongue, you 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 start feeling these citrus notes and um, the baking spices. A lot of cinnamon start kicking in. And then the finish is a little bit more oak. Mm. Really, really good. Let's go for uh, for one more sip and uh, talk about the whole experience here. Cheers. Yeah, that's just, I mean, it's, it's just a really solid, good bourbon. It's sweet. It's, it's everything you kind of want. The front of the palate, vanilla, caramel, a lot of sweetness, some corn sweetness, a little bit of oak on the front too. As it works its way back, then the pepper starts coming over, that rye spice. And then all of a sudden you get those, um, uh, the citrus notes. The, it, it really, it's coming through as a strong kind of orange citrus note for me. It's, it's really nice. And then as it works its way back, you start getting that, that seven years in there, like the, the cinnamon and the, the, the nice sweet oak flavor. It really finishes nice. It's not overpowering. That's a dangerously delicious bourbon because it does not really sip like that at all. All right, guys, so you know I got to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a quick comparison to Knob Creek and see how they compare. Is there that much of a difference with Baker's? Because for me, I haven't compared these two in a long time. So um, if you guys see my double base series, it's be a quick, uh, a quick version of that. So let's pour the Knob Creek a little bit. All right, let's compare the noses. Wow, the noses are really different. I got to say, this one, that peanut... Jim Beam, that honey roasted peanut flavor really jumps out of the glass, but the Baker's is more rounded. It's more, um, it's sweeter. Like I said, you get that Cracker Jack note out of it, and the, and my, I mean, the, the citrus that comes out of this is really crazy. 
The citrus is actually kind of becoming a little bit more of a dark fruit note. Could be like a more of a date or a raisin in there too. Yeah, the Knob Creek is just pure, sweet, vanilla, caramel, that peanut, that honey roasted peanut funk that you kind of expect with a uh, with a Knob Creek or a Jim Beam product. So let's go to the palette and see how they compare. I'm going to do the Knob Creek. So at 100 proof, okay, yeah, so the finish is not nearly as long as this one. Well, it's pretty close. Pretty close to the, to the finish on this one. But the flavors in this one are a little bit more, um, I don't know, they're a little bit more complex in the bakers, I got to say. Let me take one more sip here. Okay, so on that one, okay, on that sip, I got a little more of that citrus there. You do get that rice spice. But it's more of a peanut aspect to this one. More of that honey roasted peanut flavor starts coming through. You definitely get those caramel vanillas, but that, that Jim Beam peanut flavor really kind of comes through. And now the finish is starting to get a little bit stronger here. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. All right, let's go for a sip of the bakers here. All right, so when you have these side by side, the one thing that bakers sets itself apart with is more of a kind of a fruit flavor type aspect to it. Citrus, maybe some dark fruits in there. Um, the proof, the, the finish on this is also a little bit longer, but not too much longer than the Knob Creek. The Knob Creek, I think, just comes in with more typical caramel vanilla you get a little bit of a citrus note in there not nearly as intense as the bakers but you get more of that honey roasted peanut aspect to it um man both of these are really good but is bakers really worth that extra money for it all right guys so bakers is it's really good it's a really good bourbon i'm glad i got to try this uh especially with you guys i like i said it's one that's been sitting on my shelf i haven't gotten to it and when i heard the news about the single barrel being released um Man, I forgot what the small batch tastes like. So I really wanted to share this one with you guys and see if the flavor profile warrants maybe going out and maybe grabbing a few of these uh, before it goes away. Now, to me, Baker still remains in a weird place. After tasting the bourbon, I think it's way better than the last uh, time I had it or the last time I remembered it. It's got a really nice proof. It's one of those dangerously easy to sit pours. Uh, I really expected the, the, the proof to be a lot stronger than what it was. But it still doesn't bring enough uniqueness to me when you compare it to Knob Creek um, or the Knob Creek single barrel for less money. At 55, I think this is priced too high. I did mention I have seen this for about 30, and at that price, I think it's an absolute winner and a great pickup, especially with 107 proof and a seven year age statement. But when you compare it to the entire lineup, trying to put Bakers in between Knob Creek and Bookers, you know, it's really tough for Bakers to kind of make that headway. Um, with that said, I, you know, I'm very excited to see what kind of flavors the single barrel offering will bring later this year. But before that comes, if you see this for about 30 bucks, then absolutely grab one. I think you'll be really surprised how good this is. Um, but at 55 to 60, I would say go for Knob Creek Small Batch or the single barrel instead. All right, everybody. Well, thanks again for watching the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. Hope you enjoyed this review for Baker's Bourbon, the forgotten bottle from the uh, Jim Beam Small Batch Collection. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and find me on Twitter. I love talking with you guys. Let me know if you've had Baker's, where you think it falls uh, in the small batch collection. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Always glad to talk to you guys and see the varying opinions. So with that said, like I always say, it is not about the whiskey. It is the people you share it with. So cheers, everyone, and I'll see you next time on The Mash and Drum. Take care.